Hi, it's me, Ingrid INFP. And I have an MBTI theory for you guys. Um, it's, it's not something that I read anywhere. This is just my own observations and um, something that I've kind of pieced together um, by, well, interacting with certain people of different types. Um, I think that there's something that makes us really um, enjoy people who have our dominant function, no, our secondary function is their dominant function. But then with time, we start um, kind of seeing the problems with having our secondary function as, as their dominant function. Um, because we're just so happy having our primary function as our primary function. Uh, I think that there's a little bit of envy or jealousy or whatever towards people who have our secondary function as our first. Uh, but in the end, we're pretty happy with our function as number one, you know? So uh, I'm using uh, first the, the example of the INFPs um like admiring ENFPs and we love ENFPs I, I think that ENFPs are super fun and exciting there are extroverted counterparts and they uh, seem to just like you know do things in life as opposed to INFPs who don't like usually like to stay at home rather than actually like experiencing 10,000 things in life um, so, uh, and also, like, I can talk to an ENFP, like, it's, it just makes me laugh and laugh and laugh. They're just so funny. And I really enjoy being around the ENFPs. But would I become an ENFP? Um, no. Um, because I just enjoy my FI too much, you know? And the thing is, I'm like submerged in this FI all the time. So I don't see the negatives so much about FI as much as I see the negatives of any. And I think it's the same for anybody with their primary function. Like, because you're so immersed in it, you're so good at it. But it's also that you kind of are, you like it too much, I think. Uh, and you might not be able to see the negatives of it unless it's in another person who has it as their less dominant function, you know. Um, here we're going in the alphabet soup and all that about all of these functions and stuff, but I think there's something to it. Um, so when I was younger, I really, really wanted to develop my NE because uh, that's the way that you get out of a loop, out of your FISI loop. If you're in a loop, then it's like use your NE in order to find new possibilities and uh, explore new ideas and all that. Uh, so that is a path to growth, but we can't imagine that we're ever going to be uh, as good at any as an ENFP or an ENTP, you know? Um, I think that the same goes for INTPs, that they might really admire ENTPs, and then, <laughs> and then they realize, like, actually being an ENTP kind of sucks, because uh, you... I mean, we like being introverts, you know? INFPs and INTPs, we like, we like being on our own uh, and we like exploring ideas on our own. Um, I would be miserable if I had any as my like, first function because I wouldn't find meaning in all these crazy things that I would be doing, you know? Um, because the FI in ENFPs comes second to any. Um, well, for me, FI is, is always prioritized above, um, like crazy new ideas, you know? So, 
that's my experience for ENFPs and INFPs. Um, I think that the same thing goes the other way around. An ENFP really might admire an INFP. Um, and same thing with an ENTP with an INTP. They'll see like, oh, wow, I wish that I could go so deep into my and to my thoughts or my feelings uh, and not just do all of this, well, this uh, jumping from topic to topic, you know. Um, but then I think that these are extroverts who realize that they could never do the introverted stuff that um, the introverted counterparts um, do. And that they're just much happier exploring all of these topics without, uh, like, adhering to any one of them, you know? So that's for those types. Um, I've noticed this also in um, people, ISFJs and INFJs, because I've been friends with those types, um, that they really... Um, when they're younger and less developed, they will really admire people who have FE as their dominant function. Uh, my ISFJ best friend's mom is an ESFJ. Um, and also he has met ENFJs through me. And my INFJ friend has been around my ENFJ friends. Uh, and I think that when I first met these two people, my ISFJ friend and my INFJ friend, I think that at first they uh, wanted to be FE dominant, pretty much. Um, my INFJ friend thought that he was ENFJ at first. Um, and uh, my ISFJ friend, he really wants to treat everybody the same and be able to socialize with every single person, every acquaintance that he knows. But nowadays, he knows that that is not... Ooh, it gives him, you know, a, a comfort in his daily life. It's more important for him to um, regulate, to be able to go home and relax, and to, um, you know, um, sleep and, <laughs> you know, have a nice meal and stuff, uh, rather than going and uh, meeting tons of new people or trying to maintain the peace. Um, and same went for my INFJ friend. He would uh, go to all these parties and try to socialize with everyone and make sure that everybody was happy and like listen to all these people's uh, stories of their lives. But in the end, like he wouldn't say anything. Like he wasn't, um, nobody would give him the space to, to talk about his ideas, his NI ideas. So with time, he's gotten more and more upfront about like exposing, <laughs> while exposing himself, he, he would um, show people what he, uh, his thoughts, um, and not care about the consequences uh, socially. If he would say something that was out of line with how the group was thinking. And he was happier that way. Um, so, but I know that he has been kind of like wishing that he was an ENFJ. And my ISFJ friend, the same thing. Until they realized like, oh, well, actually, that life isn't really for me. My dominant function is uh, my way forward. Um, so that's for that combination. I don't know if it's the introverts, I can see better the introverts wanting to be extrovert and not, uh, and, and then realizing that they're happier being introvert. The other way around doesn't seem as likely to me, but that's because I'm not really friends with that many extras because I can't deal with their levels of energy. I do see certain extrovert types like admire the deep the death of introverted types, uh, like uh, my, I have an ENFJ friend who um, really admired my INFJ friend for the death of understanding 
and uh, the way that he wouldn't be influenced by all these people all the time, which she does. Um, I think that she would admire that. But in the end, she can't, she can't stop herself from uh, doing all these activities with all these friends. Um, I, she is in her 40s though, so I, I think with time she has realized how to integrate her TI and in that way has been able to detach herself from everybody else. Um, how, how they are feeling and how they are doing and focus on like her interests and what she finds interesting. Um, so I think that she's developed well throughout the years, but still it's hard for her to distinguish her own feelings from everybody else's. And um, yeah, I mean, I, I think I've told you guys about this in one of my videos. Um, but yeah, I, I can see how both the extroverts and the introverts, like we want to, we're curious about these other types, but then I think that we realize like, okay, we're, we're happy our dominant function is, is our function, you know? Um, I don't know many ENTJs or INTJs. Um, I know that ENTJs, I think, um, my boss is an ENTJ. I think that he values INTJs for the depth of their thought process and, and that they've really gone through deeply on all the plans that they're doing. But I think that in the end, I think they think that INTJs are a little bit uh, too, like, uh, too, too much thinking, not enough doing, you know? Um, not enough action because uh, my boss's TE is dominant, you know? Um, so in that case, I think that ENTJs, yeah, they, they, I think that they do admire INTJs, but then realize like, no, <laughs> that's not the way for them. Um, I'm trying to think of other combinations. Um, I think, um, I, I don't really know about the internal feelings of uh, some of these other types. Um, I think um, ESFPs kind of admire ISFPs and INFPs uh, for their FI um, uh, because like they want to follow what makes them truly happy and and you know it, deep down they do want to be ethical and not just do crazy shit because it's crazy you know but in the end they'll always want to choose the exciting over the boring and reasonable you know so um <laughs> that's a uh, that kind of makes it hard for them to put FI as a, a very high up in their list of priorities. Um, I don't know about ISFPs and SE dominance. Um, it's hard to know what an ISFP really feels on the inside unless like you hit a nerve and then it's like, uh, yes, they can be really stubborn. I mean, if INFPs are stubborn, I think that ISFPs are pretty stubborn too. Um, in some ways, more stubborn. I don't know. Uh, that SE uh, really has like some staying power. You know, I think that INFPs are a little bit more wishy-washy because we have so many other possibilities that could be true that, you know, we can't be stubborn for that long because there are so many other things that could be possible and that are maybe also true, you know? Um, well, I think that ISFPs um, are really much more, you know, they'll stick to it no matter what other people say. Um, and it could be going against what everybody else thinks and, and they won't care. 
and they'll even be a little bit angry about it. Okay, I went into a tangent at that ice of peas, but uh, I don't know if ISFP is really in my ISFPs or not. I, I haven't really gone that far as to go through every single one of the type combinations. But I do think, think that ESFPs admire FI dominance. Uh, but then they realize, like, who cares, <laughs> you know? Um, yeah, so this was just my theory about um, different types. I haven't even gone through all of the combinations. I think that there is a part of admiration and excitement that comes with um, our uh, secondary auxiliary function. Um, and I want to be like people who use it as our dominant or like our extroverted or introverted counterparts. But in the end, we uh, wouldn't change our dominant type for the world, uh, our dominant function for the world. Um, at least if you're, um, you know, a relatively healthy person of that type. Um, so yeah, tell me what you guys think. I mean, I'm just using this as a sounding board. Um, maybe none of this has any um, real truth to it. This is just my observation. So yeah, have a great day, everybody. Bye.